All right, this is gonna be part three of assignment 12 or problem set 12 from calc D multivariable. Uh, we're doing Green's theorem. So we're doing line integrals, but we're evaluating them using Green's theorem. All right, number seven, uh, line integral FDR. We're given F um, is X squared X squared, which is great. And then our curve or uh, the path we're integrating over is, X, is, is the region bounded by X squared X between zero and one. Um, so, this is what we're doing. Uh, let's start off by sketching the region. When we get this, uh, you look at it and you can see X is definitely going from zero to one. Y likes to go from bottom to top. So from here to here. So that's gonna be from X squared uh, up to X. So we can do uh, the bounds of our double integral are gonna be from zero to one and from X squared to X. Now I like to label F1 and F2. Honestly, I don't really do that on paper usually. I, I just look at it, but uh, it's a good practice. And then our integram will be partial x of f2 minus partial y of f1. So partial x of x squared minus partial y of x squared. Partial y of x squared is definitely just zero. So the integrand really cleans up into just x squared, uh, which is great. So uh, we'll integrate first with respect to y, then with respect to x. Integrating with respect to y just introduces a y, right? Because there's no y's in there. Uh, so we have Integral 0 to 1, 2x, the y that shows up when we integrate, and then uh, from y equals x squared to y equals x. So when you do that, you just get a, a new quantity x minus x squared by the fundamental theorem. Uh, I'm going to distribute, and then I'm going to reverse the power rule, and then I'm going to sub in. When you plug in 0, you just get 0. So we get 2 thirds minus 1 half, which is just 1 sixth. So uh, Green's theorem just demolishes line integrals when it works well. Uh, I mean, obviously you could get a hard double integral, but uh, for the most part, they tend to like simplify quite a bit and they tend to be line integrals that you just like would not want to deal with uh, in any other way. All right, let's look at the next one. Integral, line integral of natural log of x plus y dx uh, minus x squared dy. And then our path is going to be the rectangle bounded by 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, 4, 3, 4, Way back when it said we're to assume that we're going counterclockwise unless otherwise stated. Um, so let's say uh, F is this. I don't know why I decided to write that this time, but I did. Uh, and then we're doing our line integral. We've got to sketch the region to figure out what's going on. But you, I mean, obviously X is between one and three and then Y is going to be between one and four. Um, okay, so those are going to be the bounds of our double integral. I like to go dx, uh, dy dx if no one tells me to do anything else. Uh, so 1 to 3, 1 to 4. Our integrand, we have uh, our f1 and f2, which I could have written below where I decided to write f, but for some reason I didn't. Uh, so it's partial x of f2 minus partial y of f1. So we have this. Um, and then keep in mind, it's supposed to be like f1 dx plus f2 dy. I guess I would say that's another tricky thing to keep track of. Um, so all right, we're, we're good to go. So partial X is gonna be negative two X and then partial Y is just one. So our integrand becomes negative two X minus one. So much simpler. Uh, so we have this, the negative two X minus one, and then it's gonna be dy dx. All right, integrating with respect to Y. Uh, in this case, like because the bounds don't depend on anything, like the inner bounds don't depend on X, um, we can just break this up into two integrals. Let's, let's do that. So it's, you know, you have F of X times G of Y, and you can always separate that, uh, provided that the bounds are not dependent. And so integrate each and then, uh, fundamental theorem, both of them, and then simplify it. So I'm sure that you can follow along with that. Um, if not, you can rewind or pause and look at the work. All right. Number nine. Our vector field is e to the x plus y comma e to the x minus y. And we're going along the line segments that connect 0, 0, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2, 0, and then back to 0, 0. And we're going clockwise. So going clockwise is not going counterclockwise. And Green's theorem wants you to go counterclockwise. The way that you solve this problem is the same as how you solve it in Calc 1, when uh, the lower bound is bigger than the upper bound, it, like we're gonna throw a negative in. So uh, let's sketch the region. So we're going clockwise, which is this way, which is like wrong. Um, so here's y equals x, 
here's y equals x minus 2. But this is a horizontally simple region, not a vertically simple region. Uh, so I'm going to swap those, right? So really, I'm going to think of this as x equals y. I'm going to think of this as x equals y plus 2. Um, and then I'm going to go dx first from left to right, and then dy from bottom to top. So when I go from left to right, I'm going from uh, y to y plus 2. And then when I go from bottom to top, I'm going from 0 to 2. So I'm doing that to avoid having to do two double integrals, which you could certainly do and would get you the answer, but obviously is more work. Um, so I'm going to integrate this way. All right, let's deal with the fact that we're going clockwise. Put a negative sign. There you go. That's all it takes. Um, so our bounds are going to be 0 to 2 and then y to y plus 2. Don't forget that negative sign. Um, and then it's going to be, uh, we need f1 and f2 identified. So it's partial x of f2 minus partial y of f1. So this, and then uh, partial x of that. Actually, neither of them like changes it because e is amazing that way, right? Partial x of e to the x minus y is just e to the x minus y. Partial y of e to the x plus y is just e to the x plus y. So the integrand, uh, I guess, doesn't really simplify in this case, but it's not that bad because the antiderivatives are also the same. Um, so when I integrate this with respect to x, I'm going to get negative integral 0 to 2. The integral of e to the x minus y with respect to x is e to the x minus y. The integral of e to the x plus y with respect to x is e to the x plus y. x is going from y to y plus 2. So this is annoying, and you, I think you should just be really careful while you're like subbing in. Okay, so now we have to sub in. So we're going to sub in for uh, x. We're going to first sub in y plus 2, which gives us e squared minus uh, y plus 2 plus y is 2y plus 2. So we get e squared and then minus e to the 2y plus 2. Minus, when we plug in y, we get um, e to the y minus y, which is e to the 0, minus e to the y plus y, which is e to the 2y. So we get minus the quantity e to the 0 minus e to the 2y, and then dy. So we still have to integrate that. Um, so... Is there anything nice that happens here? There's really not. Uh, so I'm just going to start integrating. Don't forget the negative. Uh, we get e squared y. Then we get minus 1 half e to the 2y plus 2. Then we get minus y. Then we get plus 1 half e to the 2y. And we are going from 0 to 2. Nothing nice happens. Uh, there's a minus. Uh, and then uh, we're going to sub in 2, which gives us 2e squared minus 1 half e to the 6 minus 2 plus 1 half e to the 4th. It's just disgusting. Minus the quantity. The, there's a lot of chances to make mistakes with negatives on this also, which is great. Uh, one half, minus 1 half e squared plus 1 half. Whew. Okay. So then if you want to simplify this, which you probably don't, you're going to end up with e to the 6 over 2 minus e to the 4th over 2 minus 5e squared over 2 plus 5 halves. Okay, so that's number 9. I made a huge mistake in the middle of this. I don't know if I'm going to leave it in or not. Uh, maybe I'll edit it out. I'll probably edit it out, but we'll see. All right, let's look at number 10, the last problem in the problem set. So we are doing uh, the line integral. I forgot to put the little uh, circle there to show that it's like a closed curve. Um, the line integral of xy dx plus the quantity x squared plus x dy. All right, and then our region is the region shown. Uh, so we're going from negative one, zero, to one, zero, to zero, one, and then back to negative one, zero. Uh, all right, so f is x squared y, nope, is xy comma x squared plus x. And then uh, we're doing our line integral. We need to figure out what's going on. So I'm gonna say that x is going from left to right, and then y is going from bottom to top. Y is going from zero to one. This is a horizontally simple region. They like to throw these in. Uh, I don't really know why, because like I feel like vertically simple is, I don't know, I guess they're equally common, whatever. Uh, so the left curve um, and the right curve. So this is y equals one minus x. But since I'm gonna integrate with respect to x first, I have to switch that into x equals one minus y. And then this is gonna be uh, x equals, uh, no, y equals x plus one. But again, we're gonna switch it and make it x equals y minus 1. And then uh, our bounds will be from y minus 1 to 1 minus y, 
And you can already tell that's probably going to be annoying. And then we're going from just zero to one. All right, so we have our bounds. And um, if we identify F1, F2, we have this. So I'm going to just do it in one shot, right? We're going zero to one. We're going uh, y minus one to one minus y, partial x of F2 minus partial y of F1. Going to look like this. We got that. Okay, so now we got to actually do the problem. Uh, partial x of x squared plus x is 2x plus 1. Partial y of xy is just going to be x. So we have 2x plus 1 minus x, um, which will look like this, which gives us just a really nice integrand of x plus 1. So we have this. Uh, I'm going to, instead of doing like 1 half x squared plus x, because that's going to be messy when we plug in these things with y, I'm going to think of it as the quantity x plus 1 and do plus 1 times the reciprocal. There's no chain rule to balance out, so we just get 1 half the quantity of x plus 1 squared. And then dy. Plug in x equals 1 minus y. And then plug in x equals y minus 1 gives us this minus this. So that actually cleans up really nicely, I think. Um, again, I'm going to integrate, I'm not going to expand 2 minus y squared, I'm just going to integrate this thing. So I get, you do need to balance out the chain rule though, there should be a negative. So it's negative 1, 6, 2 minus y cubed, and then minus 1, 6 y cubed, and we are going from 0 to 1. So when we plug in 1, we're going to get, uh, you actually just get 1, 6, negative 1, 6 minus 1, 6. And then when you plug in 0, so it's going to be minus, Plug in zero, you get negative eight six minus zero. So we have this, which is negative one third plus four thirds, which gives us one overall. Okay, that's it, that's problem set. I hope this was helpful and good luck.